more TV like this from the world of RVs, head to rvnn.tv. Hey, welcome back to Geocaching World with Andy Smith right over my shoulder. I'm Dave Dufour and here on RV Newsnet at RVNN.TV. Man, I am learning plenty about geocaching, the great American hobby, I think, is what it's becoming, it looks like, or the great worldwide hobby, actually. It just, you know, it makes me almost want to, like, just drop everything, go out and find something. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's that obsessive, and uh, you're not the only one. Yeah. Uh, the word obsessed comes up a lot when geocaching is messing. Yeah, but here's my problem. Uh, you see, Andy, I have a hard time finding my car keys. So <laughs> what, <laughs> what is it? What is the technology? Let's talk a little bit more about the technology that's going to allow me to find a uh, Tupperware box in the middle of a Wyoming or wherever. What, and what, consider how does yourself work? lucky if it's just that, because uh, geocaches uh, can go from anything from the size of your pinky fingernail up to full size boxes and crates. So, okay, yeah, we're going to uh, look at some of those. Rough. We'll look at some of those uh, containers in a minute, but yeah. Absolutely. Uh, the thing that you're going to want to uh, learn about in, in Sense is one of these guys right here, uh, which is a GPS device or a mm -hmm. GPS receiver. Uh, what they are, in a sense, is think of it as an electronic map. Uh, and this map shows only where you are on that map. Mm -hmm. And when you uh, learn about coordinates... Uh, from, like, say, example, geocaching.com, uh, that particular uh, geocaching website, you are given coordinates which tells you uh, within a certain amount of feet where the geocache is. And that also gets put into this movable map, this GPS. Mm -hmm. And the idea is very simple. Uh, the uh, GPS shows where you are as an arrow. Mm -hmm. And uh, behind it is the map of where you're walking, wherever you're at in the world. And it will show where the uh, geocache is by showing a little treasure chest, say, for gotcha. example. And it's very simple. The idea is to get your arrow where that treasure chest is and then start looking for the actual geocache itself. Right. Now, now we, th this works off of satellite technology, right? Because mm -hmm. there's, there's signals coming from space. We have, a, we have a visual aid to kind of show you how that satellite technology works, I believe. Uh, and and it's it's the next I think it's the next one on our list here. Uh, yeah, those shows a couple of the different uh, GPSs. Now, if you can imagine that oh, melon of that my head uh, being planted <laughs> Earth, oh, there and we go. that <laughs> <laughs> that that thing spinning around as being one of the Always satellites going around Earth. Right. If you get enough of those satellites <laughs> together, <laughs> you get a really strong signal of where you're at. Okay. Always All right. So there's how many the, how many uh, global GPS positioning satellites are there? I'm believing there's between, and, and again, people will correct me because I'm not sure the exact number. I believe there's about 30 of them, if I remember correctly. Right. And there is an entire phase going through right now where the older satellites uh, that originally were put out for GPS are getting old, mm -hmm. and they're slowly replacing them. I so that's you. also a good thing for not only uh, geocaching, but your car and everything else that uses a GPS device. Right. Yeah. And then this is this was obviously this was a, a technology that was developed, you know, by the military originally. Right? Right. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yep. the uh, The government actually put them up there, and uh, all of us, John Q. Public, paid for it, and that's okay. why uh, eventually access was given for anybody uh, to use those satellites. Okay. Now, th let me ask, the, the the GPS devices that you were holding up. If we can have that picture again, that was those are uh, uh, the, what in general. What does it cost? To get uh, to have one of these, this is obviously you have to have one of these. Or can you use your cell phone? Or can you use you know, something that's maybe more geared towards uh, automobile uh, navigation? Actually, the uh, the first uh, I would say the first fifty geocaches that I actually used was from an automobile 
uh, GPS. Mm -hmm. uh, it, it's not easy. It makes it difficult uh, to find them, but it is possible. Mm -hmm. uh, there are the diehards out there that actually use Google Maps or one of the other maps uh, that are out there that uh, and just try to take a satellite look at where it's at and try to find it that way. Right. Uh, that's pretty extreme for me. Mm -hmm. uh, when it comes to the actual GPS devices like this, um, they can range uh, price-wise anywhere from, say, just under a hundred bucks uh, up to the high-end ones that can go five, six, seven hundred dollars. Okay. But those do everything, including the dishes. Okay. And then, and but, but so the more is it more accurate the more expensive you go, or or is that really not not it's more bells and whistles kind of stuff. It's it's more bells and whistles, but also one of the things that you want to consider, one of the things that will make a GPS less effective mm -hmm. is things like heavy tree cover, uh, heavy cloud cover, uh, tall buildings or tall mountains that are near you. There will be interference right. uh, with the GPS itself. And what happens is the lesser, lower end GPSs, the antennas on them are not as strong mm -hmm. as the higher end ones. So you tend to get what we call a bouncing arrow, uh, where literally it makes it that much more difficult to find the pinpoint where the G or where the geocache actually is. The higher end ones have better antennas, stronger signals. But 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 the the short story, of course, is that you can get your feet wet with relatively inexpensive equipment. Oh, absolutely. And, uh, and matter of fact, and a have lot an of idea times you like. People have uh, smartphones like this. Mm -hmm. uh, there are free apps out there that you can use to actually uh, go geocaching with. Yeah, I think that uh, we were uh, one on the on the uh, Gadgetplex show. Phil May was talking about uh, iPhone apps. Uh, one of the shows that we taped, uh, I think, last night, as a matter of fact, be up on the uh, net in a in a few weeks. But uh, we were talking about uh, an iPhone app that is uh, actually pretty good you know uh it may not be as as good as as uh as the devices the the standalone devices but it'll get you there so oh, yeah. you know, that that's that's at least a way to get your feet wet okay so i've got a gps uh device something that i'm going to use now what uh do i just go out in the woods and walk around and hope some caches show up what's the what's the process here uh, actually, there's a, a bunch of things that you can do. Uh, one of the things that I would recommend right off the bat is to get on one of the uh, geocaching services, be okay. it geocaching.com or open caching. Right. Uh, there's several of them out there. Well, now here's uh, this is a well, I've got a screenshot here of geocaching.com, and that's one of the larger uh, of the of the services that that actually contains listings of geocaches, right? Right, and for this one example, they literally have over a million, I think it's close to a million four hundred thousand uh, geocaches all around the world listed in this. All right. And the idea is very simple. You can use uh, many different ways of finding the type of geocaches you want, but a lot of times people just want to put in their zip code or their address where they live yeah. and see how many geocaches are around them. And I think one of the neat epiphanies that happen to people when they actually do realize that is they they go on this, they take a look to see how many geocaches are around them, and then realize there may be 500, 1,000, right. 5,000 geocaches within a few miles of where you live. Right. And if you go, you go on a place like Geocache, and there's another thing. There's another thing that you can actually track, and that's called waypoints. That's not really a cache, but it's sort of a, a marker of some kind. Is that kind of part of the hobby as well, or not? Yeah, and we'll definitely get in this in other shows. But uh, what happens is, is sometimes you want to either tell somebody, say for example, the best place to park. Mm -hmm. to then find the geocache after that, or where the trailhead might be where you want to start walking. Mm -hmm. uh, waypoints are an excellent way of giving these extra coordinates so that it makes finding the geocache easier. All right, yeah. And now if you look on geocaching.com, and I, I assume there, there's opencaching.us. I'll, I'll show a screenshot of both of these here. Geo, opencaching.us is another one. Uh, and then opencaching.com. These are actually two different sites. This is typical of the kind of thing that you might see. This is around uh, geocaching.com does the same thing, but the, or a similar thing. You can actually go by maps as well, and you have points and then find out information about caches that way as well, it looks like. Yeah, and uh, it's amazing how many geocaches that you're going to see when uh, when you actually do look for this. And the idea is each one of those geocaches has a set of coordinates mm -hmm. pinpointing within 
uh, the the trial and error period uh, or distance is within anywhere up to 60 feet of where they say those coordinates are. Okay. Some of them they're dead on, some of them not so much. Okay, all right. Well, so we've got that. We've got the coordinates, and then, of course, the next step is what do you do? You put these are These are latitude and longitude coordinates is what we're talking about when we say coordinates, right? Correct. Absolutely. And so that's uh, and the and the and the geo GPS device has a way of putting those in, and then you basically follow the follow the arrow in in essence. Yep. But then you find but, what, you'll find where the uh, where the actual geocache exists uh, on the GPS and where you are, and you make those two merge together as close as possible. It's what we refer to as ground zero. Okay. All right. So we you, when you found ground zero, then you start looking around to see if you can see the actual cache or or figure out where it's hidden if it's a hidden hidden from view right and what will happen is on each one of those uh, geocaches that you see on those websites there is a description that has a lot of times some very elaborate stories mm -hmm. uh, behind what the theme to that geocache is right and then there's also a lot of times little hints to get you there which sure. uh, a lot of times people need uh, because they are that well hidden well yeah we were looking through one uh, one uh, several of the other day and I I noticed that sometimes they have a little hint like no you don't have to wade in the lake to find it you know there's things <laughs> you know things like that you know don't you know it's look up you know things like that which kind of make it make it kind of helpful if you don't know uh, exactly which direction something is well that's great okay we're gonna come back in a few minutes and uh, after a break and we're gonna be talking about the uh, the sort of the sort of the toolkit what every good geocacher uh, out in the woods or you know at what what a good geocacher ought to be carrying with him or her when geocaching so stay with us on geocaching world got a question or a comment about geocaching send it to geocache at rbnn.tv or leave us a voicemail at 877-578-RBNN extension 714 tell us about a cache you especially enjoyed finding and we may feature it in an upcoming episode Follow RV NewsNet on Facebook and Twitter, and you can receive text messages to alert you when we're streaming live by texting RVNN to 72727. That way, you can join us live in the chat room, ask questions, and become part of the RV NewsNet family. Remember, any photos or other material submitted to us become the property of RV NewsNet and cannot be returned.